The town of Hollowbrook was a place forgotten by time, its streets silent, its buildings worn with the weight of countless years. In the heart of this decaying town stood the old clock tower, its hands frozen at the fateful hour when the fire consumed the lives of innocent children. The townsfolk spoke in hushed whispers about that night, but no one dared approach the tower, not since the night the spirits first appeared. Rosalind Gray, drawn by a force she could not explain, returned to Hollowbrook after years of self-imposed exile, determined to uncover the truth behind the tragedy that had haunted her dreams. The air around the clock tower was thick with an oppressive darkness, as if the very fabric of reality had been scorched by the flames that once raged. As Rosalind approached, the temperature dropped, and the wind carried the faint echo of children's laughter, an eerie, disembodied sound that sent chills down her spine. She paused at the base of the tower, her gaze drawn upward to the broken clock face, its unmoving hands a constant reminder of the town's darkest hour. Memories of the fire flooded her mind, the heat, the screams, and the unbearable smell of burning wood and flesh. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the shadows lengthened, and Rosalind knew she had little time before the spirits would awaken. She had come prepared, or so she believed, with relics and charms passed down through her family, said to ward off vengeful spirits. But as she crossed the threshold into the tower, she realised nothing could truly prepare her for the malevolent force that resided within. The interior was cold, damp and suffocating, the air heavy with the scent of charred wood and something far more sinister, something that lingered just beyond the edge of perception. In the fading light, Rosalind spotted a figure standing in the corner, half hidden in shadow. It was Marcus, an old friend who had never left Hollowbrook, his face etched with the same weariness that plagued the town. You shouldn't have come back, Rosalind he warned, his voice low and trembling. They won't rest until they've had their revenge. The fire. It wasn't an accident. It was a crime, and the guilty have yet to pay. Rosalind's heart pounded in her chest, but she refused to back down. She had come too far, and the truth was the only thing that could free her from the nightmares that haunted her. As the first chime of midnight echoed through the tower, a sudden gust of wind slammed the door shut behind them, trapping Rosalind and Marcus inside. The walls seemed to close in, the shadows deepening as the temperature plummeted further. The spirits were stirring, their presence palpable, filling the room with an overwhelming sense of dread. In that moment, Rosalind realised that the old legends were true. The spirits were bound to the clock, their rage growing stronger with each passing year, waiting for the hour of their vengeance. As the last chime of midnight echoed through the tower, the temperature dropped sharply and a cold mist began to seep from the cracks in the walls. Rosalind and Marcus exchanged a fearful glance, knowing that the spirits were no longer bound to the clock, but were now free to enact their long-awaited revenge. The mist thickened, taking on a life of its own, swirling around their feet, and whispering in voices that sounded like the children who had perished in the fire. With every step they took deeper into the tower, the air grew heavier, and the shadows seemed to stretch and claw at them. Amelia joined them, emerging from the darkness, her face pale and eyes wide with fear. We have to leave now, she urged, but the door behind them had sealed shut, as if the tower itself was conspiring to trap them within its cursed walls. Rosalind knew there was no escape. The only way to end this was to confront the spirits and uncover the truth behind the fire. The three of them pressed on, ascending the narrow, winding staircase that led to the clock's heart. As they climbed, the ghostly figures of children began to appear, flickering at the edges of their vision. The spirits' faces were twisted in anger and sorrow, their forms barely recognisable as they reached out with spectral hands, seeking to drag the living into their world of eternal suffering. The relentless wails of the dead echoed off the stone walls, growing louder with each step. At last they reached the chamber where the great clock mechanism once stood, now rusted and silent. The room was filled with the smell of burnt wood and the unmistakable scent of fear. 
In the center of the chamber, a small charred doll lay on the floor, a relic of the night that had damned the town to its fate. Rosalind bent down to pick it up, but as her fingers touched the scorched fabric, a wave of pain and anguish surged through her, visions of the fire overwhelming her senses. The clock's hands, frozen for so many years, began to move on their own, slowly ticking toward midnight once again. The spirits, sensing their moment of vengeance was near, became more violent, their forms solidifying into grotesque figures that loomed over the living. Marcus and Amelia tried to fend them off, but it was clear that the spirits were beyond reason, driven by a singular, relentless desire for retribution. Rosalind knew that the only way to stop them was to break the cycle, but the path to doing so remained shrouded in mystery and darkness. The clock's hands continued their inexorable march toward midnight, the ticking echoing through the chamber like a heartbeat. Rosalind, still clutching the charred doll, felt a surge of terror as the spirits began to close in. Their faces, once those of innocent children, had twisted into grotesque masks of rage and suffering. The walls of the chamber seemed to pulse with malevolent energy, the air thickening with the weight of countless wrongs left unavenged. Amelia screamed as one of the spirits lunged at her, its translucent form becoming momentarily solid, claws raking across her arm. Blood dripped from the wound, and the sight of it seemed to invigorate the spirits further, their forms becoming more defined, more real. Marcus fought to protect her, but his strength was no match for the relentless fury of the spirits. They were not merely ghosts, they were vengeful wraiths, driven by a need for justice that had long since curdled into an insatiable thirst for revenge. Rosalind's mind raced as she searched for a way to stop the spirits before they could drag them all into the abyss. The clock, she realized, was the key. It had been frozen for so long, holding the spirits in limbo, and now that it was moving again, their power was growing with each passing second. But how could she stop time itself? Desperation fueled her thoughts as she remembered the old stories her grandmother used to tell, stories of binding rituals and ancient seals that could trap even the most powerful of spirits. In a moment of clarity, Rosalind understood what she needed to do. She grabbed a piece of chalk from her bag and began to draw a circle around the clock mechanism, inscribing it with symbols of protection and binding. Marcus and Amelia held off the spirits as best they could, their efforts weakening with each passing moment as the spirit's assault intensified. The air was thick with the scent of burning, as if the fire that had taken the children's lives had been reignited within the very walls of the tower. The clock struck midnight, and with it, the spirits let out a collective scream, their forms surging toward Rosalind. She completed the final symbol just as they reached her, the binding circle flaring to life with a blinding light. The spirits recoiled, their forms distorting as they were pulled toward the circle, their rage echoing through the chamber. For a moment it seemed as though the ritual would hold, but then the clock hands moved again and the light began to fade. The power of the spirits was too great, their desire for revenge too strong. The ritual had failed and the clock struck midnight for the second time, sealing their fate. The light from the binding circle faded leaving Rosalind, Marcus and Amelia bathed in the cold, oppressive darkness of the tower. The spirits, no longer bound by the failed ritual, surged forward with renewed fury. Their forms, now fully solid, loomed over the living, their eyes burning with an unnatural fire. The clock continued to tick, each chime driving the spirits into a frenzy as they prepared to exact their final vengeance. Rosalind stumbled backward her mind reeling from the failure of the ritual. The charred doll slipped from her grasp and she fell to the ground, the weight of despair crushing her. Marcus and Amelia tried to pull her to her feet, but the spirits were upon them, tearing at their clothes and clawing at their skin. The once human faces of the spirits were twisted beyond recognition, consumed by the agony and rage that had festered for so long. As the spirits closed in, Rosalind's thoughts turned to the fire that had started it all, the inferno that had taken so many innocent lives. She realised that the spirits were not just seeking revenge, they were trying to recreate the fire, 
to burn the town that had failed them to the ground. The temperature in the tower began to rise, and the smell of smoke filled the air. Flames flickered at the edges of the room, spreading rapidly as the spirits channeled their rage into a new blaze. Desperation fueled Rosalind's final attempt to stop the spirits. She remembered the stories of how the fire had been started, not by accident, but by the greed and negligence of the town's leaders. The spirits weren't just angry, they wanted justice for the betrayal they had suffered. With the last of her strength, Rosalind called out to the spirits, begging them to see that their revenge would only bring more suffering, that the town's destruction wouldn't bring back what they had lost. But the spirits were beyond reason, their hatred too deep to be assuaged by words. The flames roared to life, consuming the walls of the tower and reaching out to the town below. Rosalind, Marcus and Amelia were trapped, the heat and smoke overwhelming them as the clock struck midnight once more. The last thing Rosalind saw was the tower's walls collapsing around them, the spirits finally released from their torment as the fire that had started it all consumed everything in its path. As the flames consumed the old clock tower, the spirits released their final agonised screams. The fire spread rapidly through the structure, fuelled by the spirits' relentless desire for revenge. Rosalind, Marcus and Amelia could do nothing but watch as the walls crumbled around them, the heat unbearable, the smoke suffocating. The clock, once a silent witness to the tragedy, now ticked down the last moments of their lives. Outside, the townsfolk awoke to the sight of the clock tower ablaze, the inferno lighting up the night sky. Panic spread through the streets as they realised that the fire was not contained. It was spreading, just as it had all those years ago. The spirit's vengeance was not limited to the tower. They would see the entire town reduced to ashes. The townspeople, gripped by fear and guilt, fled their homes. But the flames followed, unyielding and unstoppable. Inside the tower, Rosalind felt the heat pressing down on her, the flames licking at her clothes. She knew there was no escape, but a strange sense of peace began to wash over her. The spirits had been wronged, and though she had failed to save the town, she understood now that this was their final justice. The fire that consumed them would also consume their tormentors, erasing the pain and the memories of the past. As the clock struck midnight for the last time, the tower collapsed in on itself, a final testament to the tragedy that had begun so many years ago. The spirits, their rage finally spent, faded into the flames, their twisted forms dissolving into the fire that had been their prison for so long. The town of Hollowbrook too was consumed, its streets and buildings reduced to smouldering ruins. In the end, there was nothing left but ashes, the memories of the past carried away on the wind. The next morning, nothing remained of Hollowbrook but the charred remnants of what had once been a thriving town. The fire had done its work, leaving behind only silence and the faint smell of smoke. But as the ashes settled, the town's dark secret was buried once more. The truth of the fire and the spirits that had sought revenge lost to time. The clock tower was gone, and with it the last traces of the children who had been wronged. Hollowbrook was forgotten, just as its name had always foretold.